Hi and welcome back. We're in um, Psalm 36 today and um, as I am, um, as I'm getting closer, well to me I'm getting closer to God in my relationship. I'm being more disciplined about praying every day. <clears throat> Staying away from those things that are, are sinful in nature and just really wanting to live for God. Really wanting to give Him my life this time and mean it and not go back. Um, and that's feeling over in, in some affecting uh, how, I, how I do things at work, how I talk to my son, how, how I, my demeanor, like even my convictions. And, and I'm going through like a lot of emotional days because I'm working these out these things out and um, this helps me but sometimes I feel like even unworthy like am I am I am I the fallen Israelite that backslid and and was defiant and turned away from God and um, and now like I'm I hear him and I'm calling out to him and and he's he's gonna save me like he's gonna redeem my life like he died for me it's hard sometimes accepting that but yes that is exactly what he's saying and so i'm trying really to live that you know your um countenance your demeanor your 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 joy the peace about you your aura whatever your essence throw whatever synonym you want out there i'm working on it i'm working on it because my shine my shame of uh the, the things I did in my past that uh, I don't want any part of anymore, the promiscuity, I, I, that's even changed. I have a heart for, for uh, to being devoted to, to one person. And I'm, I'm praying that I get this right. I, I don't know if I'm gonna ever find that person, but I know I wanna hold out. And I know I, I want to never go back to using drugs. I never want to go back to a place that that is 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 shameful. It is for uh, and well, let me just be honest with you. I went to some places that were were adult in nature, and I shouldn't have been there. I, I've been in relationship I shouldn't should have never been in. I did a lot of things and. And that's that's what what I struggle with that shame that countenance I want to have is one that says she's a believer one that says she she prays she believes what God says in His Word she's she's the real deal and that doesn't mean perfection that doesn't mean I'm overly righteous that just means I I want to get this right so to you that that are listening right now. Don't look at it like I'm just reading to, to skim through this this book and I want to do it so I can finally say I've done it. No, I want to do it so that I know what he says, that I know myself, that I looked it up myself and I can say, no, he doesn't say that. And I might be um, junior at this. I might not have gone to seminary school. I might not be a pastor, but... I am a child of God. You are a child of God. Once you accept him in your life and you open up this book, you are reading the roadmap and you are not a dummy. You can understand more than you know. And we can pray to understand more than we thought possible, that we thought possible. And he will grow us. And I, I'm saying this because I know um, some of the readings, I don't read it like I'm so sure of myself. But I'm saying all this, and we're only going to read two chapters in this this one. Um, I'm saying all of this because I feel like I needed to explain some things. Not that I owe explanation to anybody, but if you're wondering why am I doing this, is it changing? It is. It is changing me. It is growing me. And I thank you, you all, for listening. And I'm I'm praying for you, even if I don't know you. Even if I um, only get one viewer, if only one life is is 
touched by a word of God, then that's his grace and mercy and love on you. And um, I'm going to just pray right now before we, we dive in. But I pray you feel worthy of his forgiveness. I pray you feel worthy of his love in him working in your life and really changing how you view being what it, what it means to be Christian. Like change that whole stigma for yourself, your walk. Like, yes, we sometimes accept forgiveness, but sometimes we still have that attitude. Like, you know, they're doing it right. I'm doing it right. Uh, judge one another, compare. And then worst of all, like I said, I, I have a lot of shame that I'm trying to get off me because we don't deserve it. Once he forgives you, he forgives you and he doesn't want you to look back from that sin and, and hold on to it. He didn't. He isn't. He loves you and he loves us so much that he gave his only begotten son on that cross. And I believe it. I wouldn't believe it if... Um, I wouldn't say it if I didn't believe it. And um, this is the internet and I know that this can go a lot of places. So I'm very careful at what I said, at what I say. Um, I'm very careful to choose the words I say. And I know that once it's out, you can't take it back. So I'm not taking it back. And that comes with a lot of responsibility. I won't get into it right now, but I was reading um, today about uh, how that's not favorable sometimes. And in these times that it can lead to um, being persecuted it's that it's that real it's that serious it's that imagine why would you persecute somebody and kill them if, if you didn't believe it makes you wonder but they do they believe it they just choose not to accept him into their life and follow his laws and his commandments that's what it is and so because they hate him so much and they hate that walk of life they'll persecute you so don't be I don't say that to to scare anybody but I, that's that's the other that's the other uh, part of this the responsibility the sharing the counting the cost and taking up your cross and walking it out um, please leave me comments or um, just continue to join me and if you don't join me just continue to read and stay stay on the path to moving forward um and let me pray for us right now father god thank you for this time reading your word diving in getting to know you and your laws your commandments your promises being able to stand on truth father god i thank you i thank you for the viewer wherever they are. Father God, bless them, their family, their situations. Bless them in their walk and their relationship with you as they desire to grow close, closer to you and find the truth out for themselves. I pray that they're strengthened and that they're encouraged, that they feel your love so much so that they accept you into their life. I pray that as we read and we grow, that we don't grow, um, that we don't grow fearful of what that means to other people of what that looks like may we not be embarrassed may we know that we stand out and we may be called weird and we might be called hypocritical or overly righteous thinking we're too good but father god we know that's far from the truth and we not we do not need to fight them but we just need to draw closer to you and know that it is it is good to be separated it is good to be part of of your Christ family, to be accepted by you, to be your sons and daughters, Father God, to know the truth that you gave your life for us, and I thank you for that, to know the truth that you died on that cross for every one of our sins, and that once we accept you in our life, we don't have to look back, no matter what the the haters say, no matter what the ones that, that don't believe that we believe, Father God, no matter what they say, we can hang on to that truth, that love, that redemption, and grow closer to you. And if we fail, Father God, if we feel sometimes like it's too hard, may we keep drawing closer to you. May we not give up, Father God, as I know it's hard, as I know fighting my own temptations, my own sinful nature, my own 
mistakes, Father God, that you have forgiven me for. But time and time again, I backslid a few times. I went back in doubt and my self-worth issues and my depression and I made mistakes. But you forgive him. And you forgive him every time I come back to you. As long as we have breath in our lungs, it's not too late. May the listener know that. May they know you love them and that you're just there waiting for us to accept you. You're at the heart the door of our heart and you're not going to force your way in our life you don't do that you're a gentleman god you are gentle you tell like it is but you don't you don't bombard so i thank you for that father god i ask that uh, you bless your readings continue continue to grow me in this walk may i not give up may i keep moving forward and reading no matter if it's one viewer or or it grows to more, Father God. As long as one person is touched, I give you thanks. I give you thanks and I pray that more people come to your to you and accept you into their lives, Father God. I give you all the praise, honor, and glory. Amen. <clears throat> all right. So we're in thirty six. Sennacherib boast against the Lord. Now it came to pass in the fourteenth year of King Hezekiah that Sennacherib, king of Assyria, came up against all the fortified cities of Judah and took them. Then the king of Assyria sent the Rabshakeh with a great army from Leches to King Hezekiah at Jerusalem, and he stood by the aqueduct from the upper pool on the highway to the fuller fields, and Elakim, the son of Helkiah, who was over the household, Shibna, the scribe, and Joah, the son of Asaph, the recorder, came out to him. Then the, then the Rabshakeh said to them, Say now to Hezekiah, Thus says the great king, the king of Assyria, What confidence is this in which you trust? I say you speak of having plans and power for war, but they are mere words. Now in whom do you trust that you rebel against me? Look, you are trusting in the staff of the broken reed. Egypt on which if a man leans, it will go into the hand and pierce it. So is Pharaoh king of Egypt to all who trust in him. So uh, Assyria, the king of Assyria is asking Hezekiah, who remember he, he's leading, he, in the book of Hezekiah, um, the, the Israelites were returning to Jerusalem from Babylon and um there was a lot of time i mean there there was a lot there's a lot of time in there and at first i thought it was just that hezekiah got word that he can go ahead and start moving people the people back to jerusalem and that it was easy but no here we find out in the book of isaiah that it's it's a constant back and forth and so here's a king of um of syria asking hezekiah basically like who do you think you are like like um that you that you will um prosper in this endeavor okay so let me keep going you are trusting no verse seven but if you say to me we trust in the lord our god is it not he whose high places and whose altars hezekiah has taken away and said to judah and jerusalem you shall worship excuse me shall worship before the altar now, therefore, I urge you, give pledge to my master, the king of Assyria, and I will give you 2,000 horses if you are able on your part to put riders on them. How then will you repel one captain of the least of my master's servants and put your trust in Egypt for chariots and horsemen? Have I now come up, up without the Lord against this land to destroy it? The Lord said to me, go up against this land and destroy it. Then I like... Then Elikim, Shebna, and Joah said to the said to um, the Rabshakeh, "Please speak to your servants in Aramaic, for we understand it, and do not speak to us in Hebrew, in the hearing of, of the people who are on the wall." But the Rabshakeh, but the Rabshakeh said, "Has my master sent me to your master and to you to speak these words, and not to the men who sit on the wall, who will eat and drink their own waste with you?" Then Rabshakeh stood and called out with a loud voice in Hebrew and said, Hear the words of the great king, the king of Assyria. Thus says the king, Do not let Hezekiah deceive you, for he will not be able to deliver you, nor let Hezekiah meet you. Trust in the Lord, 
saying, The Lord will surely deliver us. The city will not be given into the hand of the king of Assyria. Do not listen to Hezekiah, for thus says the king of Assyria, Make peace with me by a present, and come out to me, and every one of you from his own vine. I'm sorry, and one of you eat from his own vine, and every one from his own fig tree, and every one of you drink the waters of his own cistern, until I come and take you away to the to the land like your own land, a land of grain and a new wine, a land of bread and vineyards. Beware, lest Hezekiah persuade you, saying, The Lord will deliver us. So he's basically the king of Assyria is saying, Don't listen to Hezekiah, listen to me, because we will we're gonna um Basically, he's, he's telling them that you're going to drink, you're going to be so desperate, you're going to eat your waste and you're going to drink your own urine. I will provide you food. I will make you fruitful. I'm going to provide you um, food. And um, he says, don't let Hezekiah persuade you. And so these men are, um, these men, Alakim, Shemen, Joah, are to go back to Hezekiah and tell him what the king of Assyria says. And so let's see what happens here. 18. Beware lest, lest Hezekiah persuade you, saying, The Lord will deliver us. Has any one of the gods of the nations delivered its land from the hand of the king of Assyria? Where are the gods of Hamath and Arpad? Where are the gods of Sepharvaim? Indeed, have they delivered Samaria from my hand? Who among the gods of these lands have delivered their countries from my hand? Then the Lord should deliver Jerusalem from my hand. But they held their peace and answered him not a word. So these messengers didn't say anything yet. They're just listening to him and his warnings. And even him saying that, you know, he's talking about these other other nations who came up against him that weren't successful. So he's saying, basically, why does Jerusalem think that they would be successful? 21. But they held, held their peace and answered him not a word. For the king's commandment was, do not answer him. Then Alakim, the son of Helkiah, who was over the household, Shemna, the scribe, and Joah, the son of Asaph, the recorder, came to Hezekiah with their clothes torn. And so they're distraught. They're, clo they're you know, like, ah. And told him the words of the Rabshakeh. Chapter 37. Isaiah assures deliverance. And so it was when King Hezekiah heard it that he also becomes desperate. And he tears his clothes. So even after knowing like he was he was he should have been more confident okay so even after having him should have been confident he's not okay so um he tears off his clothes covered himself with sackcloth and went into the house of the lord then he sent to Eli. then he sent Eliakim, who was over the household shibna the scribe and the elders of the priests covered with sackcloth to isaiah the prophet the son of amos so tell Hezekiah now let's go to Isaiah the prophet and tell him like you know what gives this day is a day of trouble and we rebuke and blasphemy for the children have come to birth but there is no strength to bring them forth it may be that the Lord your God will hear the words of of the rapture whom his master the king of Assyria has sent to reproach the living God to reproach the living God the one true living God and will rebuke the words which the Lord your God has heard. Therefore, lift up your prayer from the remnant that is left. So the servants of King Hezekiah came to Isaiah, and Isaiah said to them, Thus you shall say to your master, Thus says the Lord, Do not be afraid of the words which you have heard, with which the servants of the king of Assyria have blasphemed me. Surely I will send a spirit upon him, and he shall hear a rumor and return to his own land, and I will cause him to fall by the sword in his own land. So Isaiah gives him that message to go to be assured, like be um, certain. Surely I will send a spirit upon him, says the Lord. So this is what God said. He's the messenger of God. Sennacherib's threat and Hezekiah's prayer. So back, back and forth. Here we go. Then, Rabsh then the Rabshakeh returned and found the king of Assyria warring against Libna. So at war with other nations. We know from early in Isaiah that's what's going on here at the judgment um, of the, the people that have been so disobedient, okay? <clears throat> for he heard that he had departed from Leith. A serious warning against Libna. For he heard that he had departed from Leith. Just, and the king heard concerning Terica, king of Ethiopia. He has come out to make war with you. 
So when he heard it, he sent his messengers to Hezekiah, saying, Thus you shall speak to Hezekiah, king of Judah, saying, Do not let your God in whom you trust deceive you, saying, Jerusalem shall not be given into the hand of the king of Assyria. Look, you have heard what the king of Assyria have done to all the lands by utterly destroying them, and shall you be delivered? Have the gods of the nations delivered those whom my father have destroyed, Gaza and Haran and Resep? And the people of Edom, of Eden, who were in uh, Talisar? Where is the king of Hamath, the king of Arpad, and the king of the city of Sepharvaim, Hena, and Iva? So Assyria is boastful, like Hezekiah, who do you think you are? Their, their gods couldn't save them. And so Hezekiah received the letter from the hand of the messengers and read it. And Hezekiah went up to the house of the Lord and spread it before the Lord. So... Then Hezekiah prayed to the Lord, saying, O Lord of hosts, God of Israel, the one who dwells between the cherubim, you are God, you alone of all the kingdoms of the earth. You have made heaven and earth. Incline your ear, O Lord, and hear. Open your eyes, O Lord, and see, and hear all the words of Sennacherib, which he has sent to reproach the living God. Truly, Lord, the king of Assyria, the kings of Assyria have laid waste all the nations and their lands and have cast their gods into the fire, for they were not gods, but the work of men's hands, wood and stone, they are false gods. Therefore they destroyed them. Now therefore, O Lord, O Lord, our God, save us from the hand that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that you are the Lord, you alone. So that's his prayer. The word of the Lord concerning Sennacherib. Okay, so... Then Isaiah, the son of Amos, sent to Hezekiah, saying, Thus says the Lord God of Israel. So Isaiah is the messenger, and he's telling Hezekiah, Because you have prayed to me against Sennacherib, king of Assyria. This is the word which the Lord has spoken concerning him. The virgin, the daughter of Zion, has despised you, laughed you to scorn. The daughter of Jer Jerusalem has shaken her head behind your back. Whom have you reproached and blasphemed? Against whom have you raised your voice and lifted up your eyes on high? Against the Holy One of Israel. By your servants you have reproached the Lord. And said, By the multitude of my chariots, I have come up to the height of the mountains. To the limits of Lebanon, I will cut down its tall cedars and its choice cypress trees. I will enter its farthest heights to its fruitful forest. I have dug and drunk water. And with the soles of my feet, I have dried up all the brooks of, of defense. Did you not hear long ago how I made it from ancient times that I formed it? Now I have brought it to pass that you should be for crushing fortified cities into heaps of ruins. Therefore, their inhabitants, inhabitants had little power. They were dismayed and confounded. They were as the grass of the field and the green herb, as the grass on the housetops and grain blighted before it's, it is grown. But I know your dwelling place. You're going out and you're coming in and you rage against me. Because you rage against me and your tumult have come up to my ears. Therefore, I will put my hook in your nose and my bridle in your lips. And I will turn you back by the way which you came. This shall be a sign to you. You shall eat this year such as grows of itself. In the second year, what springs from the same. Also in the third year, sow and reap. Plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them, and the remnant who have escaped of the house of Judah shall again take root downward and bear fruit upward. For out of Jerusalem shall go a remnant, and those who escape from Mount Zion, the zeal of the Lord of hosts, will do this. Therefore, thus says the Lord concerning the king of Assyria. So he's just said that um, they will come out of Jerusalem. He's telling Hezekiah, he's answering his prayer, and that. Uh, He's he's just saying all of these blessings of what what they will eat and he will provide to them not one year not two years but um, did he say a second year yes he said a second year but so he he's just saying he's taking care of the remnant the remaining um, let's see this is what the Lord says concerning the king of Assyria he shall not come into the city nor shoot an arrow there no nor come before it with shield, nor build a siege mound against it by the way that he came. By the same shall he return, and he shall not come into the city, says the Lord. For I will defend the city to save it for my own sake and for my servant David's sake. <clears throat> so this that is what he said about Sennacherib and, and Assyria. 
Sennacherib defeats Sennacherib's defeat and death. 36. I must be tired. Then the angel of the Lord went out and killed the camp of the Syrians, 185,000. And when people rose early in the morning, there were the corpses all dead. So Sennacherib, king of Assyria, departed and went away, returned home, and remained at Nineveh. Now it came to pass, as he was worshipping in the house of Nisroch, his god, that his sons Adramelech and Sherezer struck him down with the sword, and they escaped into the land of Ararat. Then Esahad and his son reigned in his place. So he defeats Sennacherib and his own sons. And when I say he, the Lord made it so that uh, Jerusalem defeated Sennacherib, and he didn't he didn't prosper in 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 killing them. So Hezekiah's prayer was answered, and then not only that, but Sennacherib was put to death by his own kids that um, killed him, and then his son is now reigning in his place. I um, pray you received a message. And as always, that you take care of yourself. God bless you. Bye.